Hey guys, so today, and I'm sorry about um, the lighting, I've been trying to fix it, but uh, I don't know, because <laughs> it's either too bright or um, I don't know. Okay, so today... And I think I already covered it on my YouTube channel, but I really want to cover the issue of the rat experiment because it's a very good experiment to show societal collapse. And uh, it's fascinating because the own person who devised the experiment is a bit in denial about the results of the experiment. And it's rather fascinating. I think it also explains socialism and all these uh, things that are really, really interesting and everyone should know about this study. You know why 2020 is a, um, uh, a thing? Why there's a communist socialist takeover all over the world with the CCP uh, party involved in it uh, well you should uh, um, know about this study so what um, Calhoun I think it's his name postulated was that if he could control the variables uh, and create equality equity as they put it in the new administration is uh, trying to apply these laws into to the United States as well as other countries are trying to apply it here in Europe as well. Um, and so he thought inequality caused uh, problems in animal populations and his study was trying to uh, estimate how well rats would uh, reproduce uh, and how population would grow if every variable was accounted for. At least I think that's what happened. And I've, I probably should um, search and be sure not to miss any point. Hang on. Let me pick up my phone. Okay. So, I'm sorry, I probably should have googled it, because I have it in my mind, but, and I should probably take the sound off, uh, I have it in my mind, and I know the study quite well, but I think that it's probably better to have a reference, just so that I don't miss a point. Okay. Rat study. Okay, no, not this one. Mouse utopias. Okay, this one from the Smithsonian seems to be quite um, interesting. Uh, so... <coughs> Sorry. Um, and I think it's the, the yeah, it's the study I was talking about. How 1960s mouse utopias led to grim predictions for the future of humanity. John Calhoun studied behavior during overcrowding in mice and rats. And then there's a picture, and it's really, I don't know if you can see. Yeah. Uh, this is just one of the experiments, because he was really, really, I think, mortified by the results of his study. So he tried multiple times changing variables, and the outcomes tend to be the same. Instead of population growth, uh, at some points it hits a plateau, and you see the generate behaviors that caused the destruction of the civilization. And why this isn't taught as schools is beyond me. 
you are trying people to have people trying to see that what you're seeing now is normal but no it's not normal and you can see as with studies in rats this also happens and yes it it is partially caused by um metropolis and being uh canned in an environment and socialism is an environment a cause of it but i think that a great part of the problem is socialism as you can see in here he tried to create a socialist environment even though it's not necessarily about socialism he was likely trying to control all variables but uh, we can see that the degeneracy starts to evolve the rats start to uh, become violent as we are seeing now there's violence both on the right and the left you have uh, left-leaning people uh, gearing towards non-binary and uh, um, alternative sex lives and then you have the right wing going into MGTOW movements and uh, going against women and shunning relationships both extremes are the symptoms of the same problem the society that we have is a reflection on a natural behavior and the, the the socialist aspect i think has a great deal of uh relationship to this so this is not just about the left wing it's also about the right wing because the mactow movement is also an unhealthy symptom of the problem and you will see uh i don't know if it talks about in the smithsonian page but if it doesn't i'll look for another source because there's an in, an, an interesting part about the beautiful ones and um about certain behaviors uh that explain why women have a problem because uh, they don't care for their children um they become not interesting in reproduction not um so there's an an uh, I'll, I'll read this later so what the study has that is really fascinating is the dilettante um things and even in later incursions of the study where he tried to introduce some activity some interests so the animals wouldn't develop unhealthy behavior um he failed and i think it's because we have a natural need for hierarchy and a natural need to strive and suffering for the things we need otherwise we become unhealthy so there are um a few uh signs that the society uh starts to collapse uh the food uh is ordered in one part and um people tend to flock to certain parts despite ha having a lot of vacancy available they will turn to inhabit just certain areas even though they have better places to live they choose to live in certain areas then you have the sexual thing the sexual thing is the most fascinating aspect and by sexual i also mean reproductive because after a couple generations they stop being interested in reproduction uh um so the rats in the study stop being interested in reproduction um same-sex behaviors start to em emerge and uh, a social behaviors and uh, males who don't seek females also start to females or other males 
also start to emerge. Um, so you have uh, and the females that don't care for their, their young or don't want to uh, have kids. S essentially, the um, current, um, the human equi direct equi equivalent to abortion, because of course rats cannot decide whether to have intercourse or not, uh, or get pregnant or not, like we have. They don't have contraception, so they starve off their uh, cubs. Despite the constant availability of food, uh, perfect housing, perfect conditions. And I think I'm explaining uh, most of the study. And uh, the most shocking part of this study is that elements of this particular environment, this particular decrepit society, cannot be cured. And um, even when put in a healthy colony of rats, they will not succeed. And uh, it's really, really fascinating. And I think that's my view of it. And I didn't want it to taint it with the um, views of the Smithsonian. Okay, so now I'm reading the par part of the Smithsonian, and I don't know how complete this is, but... Okay, what does Utopia look like for mice. According to a researcher who did most of his work in the 1950s through the 70s, it might include limitless food, of course, multiple levels and secluded little rodent condos. These were all part of John Calhoun's experiments to study the effects of population density on behavior. And I think the problem this with, with this study is that um, a, they made it about population density, but the health started to dwindle, the, the, the unhealthy behaviors, and I'm sorry, I'm a little uncomfortable now, okay, the unhealthy behaviors, and I, I know I have a pumpkin there, uh, the unhealthy behaviors Stop, started developing long before any uh, capacity was um, overflown. Because this was about population growth. Instead, it's a, a real caution at to what happens under socialism. Um, because, you know... Uh... These were all part of John Calhoun's experiments to study the effect of population density, density on behavior. But what looked like rat utopias and mouse paradises at first quickly spiraled into out of control, overcrowding, eventual population collapse, and seemingly sinister behavior patterns. And uh, I don't know if they're going to mention all of them in this article, but pay attention to all the behaviors and let's see if you don't see a peril in human society nowadays this is very important for io9 what's io9 esther inglis article writes okay so it's an article from an outer source which we'll probably check later about Calhoun's 25th habitat and the experiment that followed. followed. At the peak population, most mice spent every living second in the company of hundreds of other mice. They gathered in the main squares, waiting to be fed and occasionally attacking each other. Antifa, Proud Boys, you can see where this is going. Few females carried pregnancy to term, and you can see this is again. And the ones that did seeming simply seem to simply forget about their babies, 
And you can see that nowadays there's a lot of parental neglect and parents not caring for their children or parents using their children for certain agendas, not necessarily in the best interests of their children, but to further their own wish, fulfill, wishful fulfillment, whether it's a conservative parent or a leftist parent, you will see that these behaviors are happening in society quite a lot. Um, they'd move off their litter away from danger and forget the rest. Sometimes they'd drop and abandon the baby while they were carrying it. The few secluded spaces housed a population Kaloon call called the Beautiful Ones. And these are uh, the ones that I think are the incels and uh, the magtows, you'd call them. Generally guarded by one male, the females and few males inside that space didn't breed or fight or do anything but eat and groom and sleep. When the population started declining, the beautiful ones were spared from violence and death, but had completely lost touch with social behaviors, including having sex or caring for their young. And you can see that this particular segment seems to be apparently the healthiest animals. They're beautiful. They have food. They are not involved in violence. And they seem to be spared kind of by staying a bit separate from the rest of society and the collapse of society. But this is unhealthy because, as you will see, a few of the surviving ones still have the same decrepit behaviors after being introduced into healthy colonies. I hope they talk about this here. Kaloon's experiments, which started with rats, an outdoor pen, and moved on to mice at the National Institute of Mental Health during the early 1960s, were interpreted at the time as evidence of what could happen in an, over, an overpopulated world. The unusual behaviors he observed, he dubbed the behavioral sinks. And I think that that's the, my problem with this study, is that it's a, um, the author couldn't uh, separate his theories from the original concept. His original concept was that Okay. His original concept was that in an overpopulated world, certain unhealthy behaviors appear. But as you can see, how much of that unhealthy behavior is caused by food abundance and socialism, and how much of it is caused by overpopulation. As you can see, rats in colonies outside these controlled experiments seem to be successful even in of overpopulated areas. You'll see rats galore in sewers and other places that wouldn't happen if overpopulation was a problem. Because the problem seems to be these uh, con <laughs> controlled conditions that he put in place to ensure that abundance of food wouldn't impede the growth of the colony, but instead equity and equality of outcome, or at least what it hoped would be equality of outcome, ended up creating this unhealthy society. And we can see that it's kind of mirroring what's happening to us in real life. 
After Kalun wrote about his findings in the 1962 issue of Scientific, Scientific American that term caught on in popular culture, according to a pa paper published in the Journal of Social History, the work tapped into the era's feeling of dread that crowded urban areas, heralded a, the risk for moral decay, and events like the murder of Kitty Genovese, though it was misreported, only served to intensify the worry. A host of science fiction works, books like Soil and Green, comics like 2000 AD played on Kalun's ideas and those of his contemporaries. The work also inspired the 1971 children's book Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, which was also made into the 1982 film The Secret of Nim, notes the National Institutes of Health. Now interpretations of Calhoun's work has changed. English Arkell explains that the habitats he created weren't really overcrowded. Yes, that's my point. They weren't overcrowded. But that the isolation enabled aggressive mice to take to stake out territory and isolate the beautiful ones. She writes, instead of a population problem, one could argue that the universe had 25 the universe 25 had a fair distribution problem. Okay, now she's advocated for socialism, which is not the problem. Again, they had fair food, it was distributed evenly. Um, but we can take comfort in the face that humans are not mice. The NHA record spoke to medical historian Edmund Ramsden about Kalun's work. Ultimately, rats may suffer from crowding, human beings can cope. Ramsden says Kalun's research was seen not only as questionable, but also as dangerous. Another researcher, Jonathan Friedman, returned to studying actual people. They were just high school and university stud students, but definitely human. His work suggested a different interpretation. Moral decay could arise not from density, but from excessive social interaction. Ramsden says not all of Kaloon's rats had gone berserk. Those who managed to control space led rel relatively normal, healthy lives. Kaloon's work didn't give us answers, but it's rare that, sing that any single study or series of studies can draw definite conclusions. Instead, we have ideas and some strange footage of an old experiment of old experiments about mouse utopias. Um, I don't know if we should play the video that's here, but why not? Dr. John Calhoun at the National Institute of Health in Washington, D.C. has attempted to answer this question. Okay, now. In a unique experiment that took years to complete, Dr. Calhoun used white mice to study population growth and its effects on... Now, this article isn't very complete. It doesn't have all the variables. It just brushed over certain issues. And I think it didn't mention the sexuality issues to be politically correct. Let me look look for another one. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm looking for another page. Mm. <sighs> okay, I can't see why has no one tried to connect this study with socialism. Because I've been looking for months. 
but Tyrant's rat, rat Experiment. Let's see if this one was more successful. Psychology Experiment. Hmm. Let's me see. Mm. Okay, no, this is not. No. Nah. It's not talking about anything. Okay, it directed me to another part. Okay. Okay, this is about genetic traits, not our study interest right now. Uh, what humans can learn from Kaloon's rodent utopia? Let's see. And I think it's interesting that they attribute everything to overpopulation, but seem to forget that probably the variables they tried to control are the cause of the problem. Okay, between 1968 and 1970, American ethologist John B. Calhoun um, conducted a behavioral study of captive mice within a nine square foot enclosure. Okay, this one has more details, so I think we're set. We won't need to, and uh, I need to have links prepared before I, I, before I start the videos. But I've been passionate about this study, and I know it by heart. But probably not as good as explain. I'm not as good at explaining it if as if I read all the things. And uh, this seems to be more complete than. Uh, the um, Smithsonian one. Within the enclosure known as Universe 25, several pairs, okay, it actually has several details, um, of mice bred a population which ultimately swelled to 2,200 mice. Eventually, they established social orders that created inside and outside fractions and soon mating ceased altogether and this is fascinating because we are seeing this behavior in humans and um the study confirmed his grim hypotheses based on earlier studies of Nor the norway rat in small settings in his theory, he suggested that overpopulation spawns a breakdown in social functions that, in turn, inevitably leads to extinction. And I think that the problem here is the socialist measures that he took, ensuring that all rats was equal, they had equal ex access to food, um, they were cared for, provided for, there were no challenges, uh, they tried to remove hierarchy as much as they could, and again, failed. Early Rodent Studies Galoon began his experimental research on rodents in 1947 when he studied an enclosed group of Norway rats at a barn in Rockville, and this is a, a, a part of the problem is that they didn't have a control group. They should have a control group. Maryland, supplying the critters with unlimited food and water, he expected to see their population swell to 5,000 over the course of 28-month experiment. 
However, the population capped out at 200 after subdividing into smaller groups, each of which comprised of merely a dozen individuals. Continuing with these studies during the 1950s, Calhoun set up a more complex enclosure to examine how further groups of rodents would behave in a sterilized, predator-free environment. Over the course of these experiments, the same sequence of events would transpire each time. The, my the mice would meet, mate, and breed in large quantities. Eventually, a leveling off would occur. After that, the rodents would develop either hostile or cliquish or passive and antisocial behaviors. The population would trail off to extinction. So this is oh, this is a good article. I'm going to save this one. The in 1962, Scientific American published Colune's observations observations from his research. Uh, in, an in the article Population Density and Social Pathology, wherein, wherein he coined the phrase behavioral sink to describe the results of overcrowding, namely the breakdown of s social functions and the collapse of populations in the enclosed rodent environment. Hitting the public just as a vast urban expansion saw growing numbers of college grads flocking to big cities for work opportunities, many viewed the article as a warning of what could happen to the human race if populations continued to rise at their current rate. Um, you can see this, this it keeps uh, going on about overpopulation but I think the biggest issue is the way the experiment was conducted. Because you can see that in their environment, the, the rats tend to reproduce fast and they don't tend to have this, these colony issues that their colonies had. Universe 25, Galoon's experiment with a rodent utopia. And I think that's the, the biggest issue, is the this environment particularly. Expanding on his earlier studies, Galoon devised, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce it, but my native English is not English. Native language is not English. Uh, in Universe 25, a population of mice would grow within a 2.7 square meter enclosure consisting of four pens, 2056 20, living compartments, and 16 burrows that led to food and water supplies. With a plague free environment, a plenitude of comforts, a lack of pred predation, and an unlimited supply of consumables, the mice would enjoy all the luxuries equivalent to modern human life. Galoon initiated the experiment with four pairs of healthy mice, which were set loose into the enclosure to begin the new society. During the first 104 days, a face Galoon dubbed the strive... Hang on, I'll be back. Okay, so I just got a call from my mom. I went upstairs and uh, yeah, so I think I was around this part of the article. Uh, despite the abundance, mm, okay. During the first 104 days, a face Kalun dubbed the strife period.
Uh, yeah, I think it's a. I was here. Um, the mice adjusted to their new surroundings, marked their territory, and began nesting. Um, this was followed by the exploit period, which saw the population double every 55 days. By the three, 315th day, Universe 25 contained 620 mice. Despite the abundance of space throughout the enclosure, and this is important because they are making this about um, space, which I think it's not necessarily about population, overpopulation and all that, because we can see that it's not about it. And you can see my curls are already starting to bounce back to curls. <laughs> uh, sorry. I know I just, I'm so self-conscious about how... Um, anyway, so you can see... This is not about space. This is not about overpopulation. Clearly, something is amiss. Some variable that they are missing is completely wrong. Despite the abundance of space throughout the enclosure, each compartment could house up to 15 individuals. Okay. I'm sorry, she's a bit codependent. Okay, despite the abundance of space throughout the enclosure, each compartment could house up to 15 individuals, and the overall enclosure was built for a capacity of 3,000. Most mice were crowding select areas and eating from the same food sources. The act of eating, as it turned out, came to be viewed as a communal activity Imagine my shock, which caused most of the mice to favor the same few compartments. All of this huddling, however, led to a drop in mating, and the birth rate soon to fell to a third of its former level. A social imbalance also took place among the mice. And I think this, we're getting to the important part. One third emerged as socially dominant. The other two thirds turned out less socially adept than their forebearers. As bonding skills diminished among the mice, Universe 25 went into a slow, irreversible decline. Now, this is really important because it shows how our society is heading, and I don't know if we can be. Uh, reverse this and I think uh, the, the main cause of this you can see they try to make everything equal equal access to everything equality um, in terms of food uh, um, housing everything they had access to everything in equal amounts and it was evenly spread, so they could choose. And uh, so you can see that there's a, the equity principle that is present in so socialism and communism. Uh, nobody owns anything, and everything belongs to everyone. So I think this goes against nature. The most thing is uh, equity, not equality, um, is against nature. Social status in Universe 25. By day 315, behavior disparities between males of high and low status became more pronounced. Those at the bottom of the pecking order found themselves spermed from females and withdrew from mating altogether. Having no roles to fulfill within the society of mice, these outcast males wandered apart from the larger groups to eat and sleep alone. 
and sometimes fight among one another. The alpha males, by contrast, became more aggressive and pugnacious. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, often launching into violence with no clear provocation or motive. At times, these males would roam around and indiscriminately rape other mice, regardless of gender. You can see this. Meanwhile, the beta males, those ranked between the aggressive alphas and outcast omegas, grew timid and inert, and often wound up being the passive recipients of violence. In several instances, bloodbaths ended with a cannibalistic feast for the victors. And you all can already see the leftist media promoting cannibalism as, as a solution for a global warming and a lack of food. So this is an interesting take. Uh, the infant mortality top rate topped 90%. With male mice abandoning their traditional roles in Universe 25, the females were left to fend for their nests. And I think it's really interesting because you can see how all this is playing the essentially the, from the 17th century until now absentee fathers um single mom households all this plays into the future and it's a vicious cycle um consent Consequently, many females adopted more aggressive forms of behavior. And uh, you can see this in tons of videos out there with Antifa and uh, other women that are against society and uh, males. Uh, you can see that which would sometimes spill over into violence toward their young. And it is really... And this one is really interesting because you can see all the feminist writings against their male sons mainly, but also against their female daughters, hating their roles as females and all that, and raising girls to be boys and boys to be girls, and the child has no choice in it. It's like... Okay, if you want to change genders, be my guest. But please, don't, um, don't raise your children in that environment. When the child is old enough to decide, it's up to the child. But that's, as children, as children, oh, that's not English. As children, they need to be raised according to their gender. Or if you're going to let them wear dresses, at least don't try to put them on hormones, please. Um, uh, many females adopted more aggressive forms of behavior, which would sometimes spill over into violence toward their young. Others would refrain from motherly duties altogether, banishing their unraised litters and withdrawing from further mating resulting in serious consequences and you can see this have males going their own way females going their own way that's what's happening to us this is a cautionary tale why isn't this taught in schools again they didn't derive the proper conclusions from it they, they attributed it to overpopulation. But as we can see, it's not so much about overpopulation, but rather about the situation in which they were in. They clustered together and had socialists imposed on them. So I think it's the socialist society that is responsible for the lack of success. And the fact that they didn't have to work for their food, they didn't have 
to fight predators. Everything was handed to them. And guess what? That's what happened to rich elites. And that's why they tend to go to the left and be communists and socialists. And that's what happens to the... And so you can see this is serious. It's socialism. That's the problem. Rich people, the super wealthy, don't have to fight for their wealth. They, you can see how they become left-leaning communists, socialists. The same thing can be said for a single parent households and other socially dependent households that are poor but live on welfare and depend on society to raise their children. These elements tend to dr go to leftist positions precisely because they don't have the drive to fight for anything or they already have things so they really don't need to fight for them and so they embrace all these draconian measures that we see being implemented. I'm not a right against rich people. I support uh, capitalism, um, but I oppose monopolies, which is what we were seeing. Um, okay. Back to the rats. Others would refrain from motherly duties altogether, banishing their unraised litters and withdrawing from further mating, resulting in serious consequences. In compartments, the infant mortality rate topped 90%. Calhoun named this stagnation phase alternately known as the equilibrium period. He attributed the overly aggressive and passive behavioral patterns to the breakdown of social roles and rampant overclustering. Breakdown of social roles. What are we seeing? Men and women are not fulfilling their roles, intended roles for nature. We're supposed to be mothers, and men are supposed to be fathers. We're supposed to be partners. And we are seeing a moment in society where they're trying to turn women into men and men into women. Women must do things that are not feminine and try to become more like men. And men must become more like women according to the new socialist views. This is exactly what's happening. And um, why isn't this taught in schools? Again, cautionary tale. And I'm sorry, I don't usually behave like this, but this is such an important study. Clearly, we're seeing this in the current population, the breakdown of societal roles is what's causing this. Because we have a natural drive to be mothers. And we're being taught that what good is it if you don't do this and that and you don't have a career? Yes, you can have a career, but the priority should be family. That's what makes women happy. As for men, that's the same thing. You should strive for family because <sighs> and men need to be manly. They don't need to go all soft and cuddly and uh, <clears throat> wear pink because it's politically correct and um, whatever that nonsense is. It's against their own nature. Teaching these things to kids that we're teaching now, it's against nature. We're essentially... Um, hopping on a fast train to self-destruction by allowing this to be taught in schools. 
you should homeschool your kids because this being taught in schools is a recipe for disaster. Now, homosexuality is something that is natural and has happened for centuries. And it happens in other species, but not in the high numbers that we are seeing now. Why? Because of the breakdown of societal roles. The same thing goes with men that are not interested in being with women or men and are asexual. Or uh, the men going their own way. Or fat women who scorn men. All these things are not natural and they're growing and growing in society for a reason. All this promiscuity and all the socialism that has transpired into everything in our lives is seriously damaging us. And a lot of these things are not necessarily socialism, but they put us on a fast pace to it. So it is important to teach your children their natural roles. It's important to foster hardworking environments. It is important to, to fight this because ultimately when society will collapse, the very few that are going to be able to start a new society are those that were not part of it and tried to live in the bubble where they had healthy relationships with their partners, healthy families that didn't follow the societal norm. Uh, but men going their own way, that's part of the problem. It's unhealthy behavior, yes. It's reactionary, but they're the beautiful ones that were also part of the unhealthy society. Feminism, part of the unhealthy society. These uh, gender bending, whatever, part of the problem in the society. We need to manage our natural instincts and drives and society and make it work. Equity is not going to solve anything. Equity is only going to make it worse. Gender, race, whatever ideology is only going to make it worse. And I'm sorry. Athena. Athena. No way. Linda. <laughs> Sorry. Talking to my cat. Uh, a spike in mortality rate by the 560th day, the population increase had ceased altogether as the mortality rate hovered at 100%. This marked the start of the death phase, also known as the die period in which the rodent utopia slid toward extinction. Amidst the violence, hostility and lack of mating, a younger generation of mice reached, reached maturity. Having never been exposed to examples of normal, healthy relations, with no concept of mating, parenting or ma marking territory, and you can see this, this is very fascinating, how we were raised in the 80s and 90s. My generation spent more time at school than with our parents. Our parents spent the entire time working, 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 and I spent more time with my... Um, I had uh, people taking care of me um, after school. I stayed at school longer because my parents were working. Um, all these things of parents not caring for their kids is going to create inept adults. And this is what happening. We're replacing parenting with school. We are letting the state raising our kids instead 
of staying home and caring for our own kids. That's the most tragic thing. And it's another problem, not necessarily socialist, but it's part of the modern society problem, is that we let other people care for our children. Yes, having relationships with other kids is very important. Raising other kids um, and being part of society is important, but how much of it is healthy and unhealthy, I'll let you decide, but the important part is, yes, school is important, but parenting is also important. They should yet learn from their parents and not from the state. So there should be a, a balance between how much we learn from our parents and how much we learn from school, how much time we spend in society, because of course it's important to spend time with society, and how much we spend with our family. And I think there's a balance missing there. We get all our instruction from school rather than from our parents. What do parents know about schooling? They don't know about what is being taught to us. For all they know, it's the complete opposite of what they learned when they were in school. Well, in my, the case of my parents, it is because we were under a dictatorship, but still. Um, and I learned in Switzerland, Portugal, so that my education is diverse because I studied in different countries. But then again, there's the missing variable, which is our children spend con either at school, home alone, and when parents get home, it's essentially dinner time, bedtime, and there's very little time spent with their parents. This is one of the big issues with our society. And mommy's calling again, sorry. This is the thing, when we needed attention, oh, we did no, no attention. And not necessarily because of work, because some parents that do not work, or even when they are at home, they do not give us the attention that we need. Today is a PlayStation, TV, a computer, rather than spending time with family. And it really, alters the way the outcome of our education um if i'm having kids rule number one no tvs and no computers in the room until they are of high school senior high school level because of course in senior high school you have a lot of homework to do and stuff like that. But other than that, no computers in the rooms. Sorry, I got another call. <laughs> anyway, a spike in the mortality rate by the 568th day, the population increase had ceased altogether as the mortality rate hovered at 100%. This marked the start of the death phase, also known as the die period, in which the rodent utopia slid toward extinction. Amidst the violence, hostility, and lack of mating, and we are seeing this. Uh, just two days ago, I saw an article on Russia having uh, teens not being inter interested in sex, not, I don't know if it was teens or young adults, not being interested in sex because of computers and social media and replacing the, the, the way their parents were replaced is now replacing, um, adult relationships so 
We are replacing Vigo games and um we're replacing video games and um internet with relationship adult relationships. Uh The younger generation of mice reached maturity, having never been exposed to examples of normal, healthy relations with no concept of mating, parenting, or marking territory. This generation of mice spent all of their waking hours eating, drinking, and grooming themselves. What do we see now? Young teens eating a lot of food, grooming themselves on the internet. Um, you know, videos, TikToks, all of that because they have no aspirations or those that they have are very vain and futile. Um, in reference to the perfected, unruffled appearances, Kaloon called these mice the beautiful ones, living in seclusion from the other mice at dinner. Um, I lost myself, hold on. From the other mice, they were spared the violence and conflict that waged in the crowded areas, yet made no social contributions. According to Kaloon, the death phase consisted of two stages. The first death and second death. The former was characterized by the loss of purpose in life beyond mere existence, and we see this happening to new generations. And um, part of it is the needless, the, the, the non-natural need for growth and evolution and being more and more progressive. If it, you know, this and the, the thing with the gender nonsense is it's part of this. Because transgender have rights, homosexual and lesbian and women have rights, they need to invent new things to change. Because their, um, the, what makes their life important is fighting for something, but if there is nothing to fight for, they will make up new things to strive for. And uh, so, yeah, this <laughs> ah, Tina, this leads to new uh, unhealthy behaviors and m making up new forms of language and new concepts because you always need to be oppressed and fight for something otherwise you know it's like those NGOs that uh, have no purpose once they accomplish their goal and therefore there keeps to be problem they keep the problems and don't solve them because if they solve the problems then it would mean that that NGO is no longer needed and therefore it would be um, you know, uh, that's dissolved, I suppose. Um, the former, the, um, the first death, was characterized by the loss of purpose in life beyond mere existence, no desire to mate, raising young, and, or establish a role within society. And we're seeing this. People don't want to have kids. Um, this first death was represented by the lackadaisical lives of the beautiful ones, whereas the second death was marked by the literal end of life and the extinction of Universe 25. The sun sets on Universe 25. Extending on his observations of the beautiful ones, Kaloon later opined that mice, as humans, thrive on the sense of identity and purpose within the world at large. 
He argued that experiences such as tension, stress, anxiety, and the need to survive make it necessary to engage in society. When all needs are accounted for and no conflict exists, the act of living is stripped to its barest physiological essentials of food and sleep. In Kaloon's view, Irin is the paradox of a life without a work or conflict. When all sense of necessity is stripped from the life of an individual, life ceases to have a purpose. The individual dies in spirit. Gradually, the mice that refuse to mate or engage in society oh, came to outnumber those that formed gangs raped and plundered and fed off their own. The last known conception in Universe 25 occurred on day 19, 920, at which point the population was capped at 2,200 mice, well short of the enclosure's 3,000 capacity. An endless supply of food, water, and other resources were still there for the mice, but it didn't matter. The behavior sink had set in, and there was no stopping Universe 25 from careening to its self-made demise. Soon enough, there was not a single living mouse left in the enclosure. Failed salvage attempt and concluding observations before the rodent utopia imploded entirely, Kaloon removed some of the beautiful ones to see whether they would live more productive lives if released into a new society, free of social strife and carnage. Um, placing these mice in a fresh setting with few pre-existing residents, a scenario similar to that which greeted the initial pairs placed in Universe 25. He expected the beautiful ones to awake from their social haze and thence were nature's call to populate the barren environment. However, the relocated mice showed no signs of change from their earlier behavioral patterns, refusing to mate or even interact among their new peers, the reclus reclusive mice eventually died of natural causes and the fledging society folded without a single new birth. In Kaloon's view, the rise and fall of Universe 25 proved five basic points about mice as well as humans. The mouse is a simple creature, but it must develop skills for courtship, child rearing, territorial defense, and personal role fulfillment on the domestic and communal front. If such skills fail to develop, the individual will neither reproduce nor find a productive role within society. As with mice, all species will grow older and gradually die out. There is nothing to suggest human society isn't prone to the same developments that led to the demise of Universe 25, and we're seeing it now. Women don't want to have children. They want to be like men. Men don't want women. They either want to be single and uh, bachelors, and uh, have occasional sex, or they want other men, or, you know, you know they don't want the, the problems with uh, family. Uh, if they can get free sex, why get married? Um, individuals, um, if the number of qualified individuals exceeds the number of openings in society, chaos and alienation will be in inevitable outcomes. Which brings us to the use of computers and electronics and everything 
to substitute human roles uh, that is causing less jobs and you know individuals raised under the latter conditions will lack any relation to the real world physiological fulfillment will be their only drive in life and the increase in on in obesity um, sexual deviant behaviors um, anorexia even you know smoking drinking all these behaviors can be explained by this just as uh, mice thrive on a set of complex behaviors the concern for the concern for others developed in post-industrial human skills and understanding is vital to man's continuance as a species the loss of these attributes within a civilization could lead to its collapse Kalun's work after universe 25 in 19 this is the fascinating one um because this one did Fail too. I think it's the I don't know. Let's keep reading. And I know this video is already long, but it's such an important topic, and I I should start making um be concise in my videos. But yeah, in 1972, Colun shared his observations about the results of the rodent utopia in an essay titled Death Squared, the explosive growth and demise of a mouse population. This work gained instant notoriety for its sorry, grim outlook on the consequences of an overpopulated and overly satiated society. Given all the strife that had been impacting the world in the years immediately before Vietnam, race riots, political assassinations, the Cold War, China's cultural revolution, the public was fearful of Kowloon's findings and that they were indicative of mankind's then present course. The examples of rodent pillage and carnage in the wake of overcrowding seem to mirror the social unrest of the 60s and 1770s human society which coincided with unprecedented, unprecedented urban sprawl. Despite the grim parables presented in Kalun's observations, he wasn't trying to imply humankind. <laughs> humankind? Humankind! Okay, political correctness. Mankind. Humankind sounds so weird. Humankind. Okay. Was headed down a similar path toward extinction. While he definitely saw parallels between the downfall of Universe 25 and some of society's ills, he stressed Humans, as more sophisticated species, had the wisdom and ingenui ingenui ingenuity to reverse such trends. Do we? I think we seem to get be getting head first into them. After all, humans have science, technology, science and technology, but they're misinterpreting it and ignoring it and even making new science. Uh, to fit their feelings, uh, had the wisdom and ingenuity to reverse such trends. After all, humans have science, technology, and medicine, and all of which <clears throat> give mankind the ability to pinpoint causation. But do we? I mean, we used to. Avert disasters, heal wounds and illness, explore new environments. But again, as his study proved, so a member of a sick society will not thrive in a new environment. So unless we were able to escape the elements of the sick society, it is very unlikely that we will a 
be able to escape it completely even in a new environment. He also pinpointed out Universe 25 was not a natural habitat. We don't live in a natural habitat. We live in cities and even villages. And we have pol politics that are against our natural needs being imposed on us. Socialism is not natural. Um, as it was supplied with an abundance of food and luxuries and kept free of predators and disease. Hope for human mankind, I'm sorry, humankind is too cringy. Still, Kaloon feared mankind. Oh, finally, some. Finally! <laughs> the correct use of the word. Humankind is so. Uh, it's like too presumptuous, too. To, I don't know. Still, Kaloon feared mankind could lurch toward a similar doom if cities became overcrowded. Uh, <laughs> It's not the cities being overcrowded, it's the social policies and the population swelled beyond the capacity of the job market. To help society find ways to prevent this from ever happening, he spent part of his later career exploring different forms of human advancement which he extended to the concept of space colonization. To that end, he formed an academic team called the Space Cadets. <laughs> its purpose, I didn't know about this part, its purpose was to promote the idea of humans setting up colonies on other planets. Maybe you should try recreate everything, but without the equity aspect of it. Um, you know, just put it in a place where the mice had to fight and work for their food. Um, Kaloon also focused on city planning, which he felt was a key to avoiding the behavior sink of Universe 25. He believed the design of cities was partially responsible for the ways in which inhabitants interacted with each other and steps, and steps should be taken in tandem with the development to maintain positive communications between people. As part of his effort to promote alternative concepts in city design, he tinkered with Rodent Utopia model with more than 100 further universes. 100 further failed universes. Over the next two decades, his work in this area was highly esteemed among city planning councils in the United States and abroad. Legacy questions in the 21st century. More than four decades have passed since Kaloon conducted his Universe 25 experiment. Nonetheless, questions linger regarding the observations he drew from the rodent utopia's collapse. Most pressing is the question of human population, which globally could stop 9.6 billion by 2050, if we stay on our current curse, course. Course. The population trend arouses numerous concerns. Will mankind continue to thrive if the population exceeds the number of available jobs? Well, what a doozy. Now we are being replaced by computers, so it's only going to get worse. What about disruptive technology, whereby a new product or innovation renders wool fields obsolete? Yeah, maybe I should read before I comment. Or a task that once required multiple hands can now be completed with the press of a button. If most jobs are outmoded by technology, what will sustain economy? Will large cross-sections of the population become destitute? Or will the billionaire class support everyone? And again, this will cause the socialism, the, the welfare problem that we saw with mice, and that's what causes the societal collapse. 
we need jobs. We need capitalism. We need, well, capitalism, not big corporations, not, you know what I mean. Everyone creates their own business, or if they don't, they work for small businesses. Mm, how will people function and interact with one another in a world where hardly anyone works? Can an individual develop interperson interpersonal skills when there is no need to pursue working relationships in the outside world? At the very last, mice and men seem rather similar when Kalun's research is compared with modern-day civilization. Um, and this is the last part of it. But I think he tried one experiment in which the rats had interests and other developments. Uh, but um, even with extracurricular extracurricular activities, um, um, it ended up collapsing anyway. Um, let me search another one. It's really, I think this video is already really long. I'm going to stop this here, but I will definitely revisit this because it's a very interesting subject. And um, I really, really, really love this study. It's fascinating. And if we could reproduce it with um, different... Uh, variables because i think they they were dead set on proving it was due to over overpopulation that i i kind of think it's the way society is structured in an unnatural way and um so i think the <laughs> that we could benefit from a new New updated studies involving the same number of rats in different conditions so that we could uh, extrapolate the variables, what changed and what creates this stagnation. But I do believe that the socialist aspects of it were what created the societal collapse. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Please subscribe. You know, whatever. I don't think I'm going to post this one on YouTube because I don't know how long it would last on YouTube. So I'm going to put it on uh, BitChute and Rumble and uh, I don't know. <laughs> so that's it for this video. Bye!